Howdy, y'all. Joe Hills here, recording as I always do in Nashville, Tennessee. And in today's lesson, we're going to learn about the trade-offs of going from a simple website to a full content management system, like WordPress. The first few lessons in this series have been given a sweepingly broad overview of the bare minimum of concepts required to self-publish something on the web in an effort to create what's called an MVP, or Minimum Viable Product, at each step of the way. What problems do content management systems address? If you only need a handful of pages that you're fine hand coding changes into a few times a year, then the simple website you self-published in lesson three is a minimum viable product that you can keep improving on and updating at your own pace. But I recommend you at least hear me out about the pros and cons of content management systems, which are the MVP for folks that need to update their sites frequently with new blog posts, new pages, and lots of photos and videos. You can even spread that labor out more easily with multiple collaborators, friends, family, employees. You may not need to make that jump yet, but it's nice to know where that next landing is, just in case you need it later. What complexities do content management systems introduce? We've mentioned plenty of pros of content management systems so far, but there are trade-offs to be aware of too. We'll call those complexities, or comms for short. The first com is back-end complexity. You'd be jumping from a website that runs solely on HTML and CSS files stored in a file system to a piece of web software written in a scripting language like PHP and storing your website's information in a database like MariaDB. That scripting language would be taking that info in the database and creating HTML and CSS files to send to your site's visitors. But that is an extra step that you're gonna have to possibly need to understand at some point if you get too in the weeds. Can you avoid getting in the weeds? Probably. Now, a lot of web hosts, like our sponsor Name Hero, offer streamlined WordPress installs that'll help you avoid needing to get your hands too dirty with the internals of the CMS while you install it. Post installation, the CMS itself should cover what most site creators need in terms of ways to customize and configure your site, your look and your feel, without delving too deeply into scripting or the database. But any sort of ease of use abstraction will have its limits. If you have a dream, if you have a vision of something you want your site to do that isn't really on rails for your CMS, you may need to dig a bit deeper and learn a bit more to make it happen. But hey, to folks like me, that's an opportunity for some fun. But it's fun you could lose a whole weekend on. So that's just something to keep in mind. Our second column is community. Most content management systems have communities online and some extent into the real world as well with meetups and conferences you can attend to meet other folks who enjoy self-publishing online. I've been to several WordPress events in Nashville, some down in Birmingham, Alabama. I've gotten to meet so many cool people and I really recommend you look into meetups in your area if you do end up going with WordPress. But I do wanna warn you, there's trade-offs with everything. With community, there's the complexity of community leadership, which can be community leadership drama. That can lead to forks in the software ecosystem, and in the extreme case of WordPress, can lead to like wild news-making legal action. And uh, like, this even led to me being included in page 24 in this preliminary injunction against automatic. But hey, I gotta say, even after all that, in the case of WordPress, I'm still running it on joehills.net and I still recommend it to most folks as the best option for them. Moving on, the third com is co-management. If more than one person in your family or business can post or edit your site, You'll need to communicate and set clear expectations for what is and isn't appropriate to post there. This is a great opportunity to collaborate in a new way with your team. It can be a great learning experience too. 
but make sure you do set aside time for onboarding conversations with anyone you're giving an account and credentials to. Why WordPress? Why choose WordPress for this example? Because it's easiest. I used to design custom content management systems back when the market for these was nascent. Businesses needed features WordPress or Drupal didn't have, and my job was to build them. Now, over time, WordPress, Drupal, they caught up. They are basically now feature complete pieces of software. And my job shifted to adding little bits around the edges of those content management systems rather than building things from the ground up. It is easiest to start with something off the shelf. And most web hosts have a shelf with a box called WordPress. You can just take that down and install it. We will jump into that in the next segment. But before we do, quick rabbit hole warning. I spent so much time researching different content management systems at my old job. Just so if a client asked, why aren't we using this? Have we considered that? We had to have considered it. We had to explain why we weren't using it. And really, for most people, I'm recommending WordPress. It is the best starting point for most people, given that it has a huge network of community members writing tutorials, running local conferences. It's ubiquitous with most web hosting services, and it's relatively easy to get started with. So let's get started with it. Installing WordPress. Yeah. I have personally installed WordPress dozens and dozens of times. It's very doable if you're familiar with setting up your own database users in the back end, but for most new webmasters, it's advisable to just use your web host's automated WordPress installer. There's quite a few of those linked in the WordPress documentation, including APS Plesk, Fantastico, Installatron, and Softaculous. Since our sponsor Name Hero offers a Softaculous installer, that's what you're gonna see here. Ooh, there's a few options, but don't overthink them. They're not that bad. Most folks will want to install WordPress in the root directory of their site. But if you're just messing around, you can put it in a directory or a subdomain you named something like test. Make sure you set the email though to an email address you actually check and write down your username and password somewhere secure, like a password manager. Feature overview, yeah. You can log into your WordPress admin by appending slash WP admin to the end of your WordPress install URL and start following along as we delve into the features we mentioned at the beginning of this lesson. Posts and pages. On the WordPress admin sidebar, you'll see links to posts and pages. We're going to take a moment to break down the difference. Pages are for information that doesn't change too often and needs a streamlined URL. For example, you might have an about page at example.com slash about or an FAQ page at example.com slash FAQ. Posts are for pieces of writing that might be anywhere between tweets or full blog posts. If your whole site is about reviewing vinyl albums, each review might be a post. If you're writing a journal site, each post might be a journal entry. Now, that sidebar, it's pretty good. You can create new posts and pages from that sidebar and edit the ones you've already created. The interface is gonna be similar to Tumblr, LinkedIn, or anything like that you might have already used. You can also preview your posts, schedule the publish date, or just publish them immediately. That's what I use for my draft scripts for this series at joehills.net. Ooh. From the post or page editor, you can upload media like photos and videos, set captions to go under the photos, and add alt text for screen readers used by vision impaired visitors. If you have uploaded a photo to Blue Sky, you know how this works. You can consult the WordPress documentation if you really want to get in the weeds on this. But really, like a lot of things, I want to encourage you to just get started. Mess around. Play with it. Get going. Now, user management. <gasps> That's something you don't want to just necessarily play around with, <laughs> okay? This is something where you're giving someone else access to your website. They can make changes, they can make additions, they can delete the whole thing maybe, depending on the permissions you give them. So let's uh, maybe think about this a little bit more. Let's say you have a coworker, family member, or trusted friend you'd like to collaborate with. 
All you need is their email, and you can send them an invite to collaborate on your CMS that will go straight into their spam folder. So make sure they check for that. You can control whether or not additional editors or users have permissions to modify all posts and pages of the site or only add their own writing. And you will want to determine that on a case-by-case -case basis. In general, it's easier to give more permissions over time than to take away permissions as a punishment. So I'd recommend looking closely at that and thinking about what access your collaborator actually needs. Site customization. One of the whole points of trying to make your own website is to build it in a way that reflects the image you want to project to the world. WordPress's built-in customization options will give you a lot of choices as you do that. So rabbit hole warning, who are you? What color is your website? Now, if you're making a personal website, it's going to have a different look and feel than a restaurant or business site. But no matter what your site is about, you're going to want to experiment with color, shape, text, font choices. However, don't get too frustrated if it doesn't look like all the other websites out there just at first. Those are built by professional graphic designers for the most part, and you're just getting started. It is okay to iterate as you go. Now, if you don't like the themes included with WordPress, you can download additional themes from the WordPress.org theme directory. You can also download plugins from the plugin directory. But guys, that is a lot. There's a bunch of choices, and unless you really trust the particular developer, you, you want to be careful about what code you add to your site. So for the purposes of this lesson, I'd recommend really trying to stick with one of the WordPress base themes and holding off on plugins quite yet until you do a little bit more research. So anyway, with the WordPress base themes, you can edit and adjust all sorts of things using this customization pane here. Ooh, ah, ooh. It's hard to tell, but I'm clicking on these things at a different time than when I'm waving my hands. This is the magic of post-production. You get the idea. Now, seriously though, you can spend months trying to get your website perfect, but this is a series about creating a minimum viable product. Get something out there, share it with the world, improve on it as you go. I recommend noodling around with a base theme, or maybe if you're a little more adventurous and feel comfortable doing your own research into developers of themes, purchasing a paid theme from a legitimate theme developer, don't pirate anything. Don't Google free version of this theme. You will get malware. Just stay close to home on this one until you really know what you're doing, okay? But the most important thing is to just get out there and start sharing your writing or your artwork or whatever you're creating with the world. Outroduction! The first four episodes of this series have provided an introduction to the technologies used to power basic websites all over the world. They're everywhere today, partly because they were easier to use than the alternatives that have arisen throughout the years. If other people can do it, so can you. You can make a web page. You can publish that web page. You can make a website. You can use a content management system to launch a blog or a gallery site for your illustrations and photos. You can do it. I really appreciate our sponsor, Name Hero, for helping me kind of bring this message to y'all and encourage you in this way. I've been wanting to make this series for years. And they are a big part of the reason that I was finally able to make it happen. So if you need hosting or a domain name, please consider making your purchase using my affiliate link at namehero.com slash Joe. That's all for this lesson. Until next time, y'all, this is Joe Hills from Nashville, Tennessee. Keep adventuring.